Hey, what is up guys? My name is The Cherno and welcome to a bit of an update video slash vlog, something I haven't done in a bit of a while, but I thought that it would be worthwhile me updating you about what's gonna be happening with the video scheduling in the next week because there might be a bit of an interruption because I'm going to GDC in San Francisco from the 17th to the 23rd of March. Well, I'll be leaving on the 17th. GDC, I think, starts on the 19th. But anyway, so EA have been nice enough to fly me out to GDC this year, as well as like a few other people from my team. So that's pretty exciting. Never been to the US before. So never been to GDC or anything like that. So I'm really looking forward to it. GDC, for those of you who don't know, is, stands for Game Developers Conference. It's basically like one of the biggest game conferences in the world ever. It's gonna be like 20,000 plus people there, I think. Um, there are a few really, really interesting talks that I'm looking forward to going to. I'm not presenting or anything like that, just attending. Um, if any of you guys are gonna be there, then I'll definitely see you there. And I'm just gonna be hanging around San Francisco like all week and weekend as well. So that should be pretty exciting. But because of that, I'm probably not gonna be able to do any videos. I am still gonna try and do vlogs and videos that kind of involve me just talking to the camera like I am right now. Uh, I probably won't be doing any videos that involve me like programming on my laptop, like the normal C++ series, OpenGL series ones. But if there are any kind of theory videos that I really should get through that don't really, that don't really require me to write code in front of you, but more or less just kind of need me to explain something to the camera, maybe I'm gonna try to see if I can do some of those. Maybe just some general vlogs at GDC as well. So we're gonna see how that works out, but no promises. Anyway, I thought I'd answer a few questions, so I just tweeted out like five minutes ago if you guys have any questions for me. Um, so let's just go ahead and look at the Twitter and answer some quick questions. So, how do you approach learning an API? Well, when you're learning an API, or you're like learning how to use a library or something like that, usually the reason that you've like gotten that library is to save de development time, right? Because you don't want to be recreating everything from scratch, so you're using a library to kind of speed that up for you. So whilst I would say that the best thing you can do is probably read all the documentation, if you're talking about like speed and you wanna quickly just get started with an API, usually any good libraries will include a lot of samples or examples. So you wanna take a look at them and see how you can quickly copy and paste code and adapt it into your project for what it is that you're doing specifically. Sometimes you won't be able to, sometimes you may need to change things or look at the uh, documentation or maybe just tinker around with the code a bit. But I would say just if you're looking for the easiest way, look at the actual samples that they provide or the example projects that they provide. Larger libraries should have a bunch for each kind of like major feature they support. Um, so definitely check that out and see if, uh, if you can just basically copy and paste some code from the examples into your project, hook up the library and get something running as quickly as possible. And then from then you, from then you can kind of work on iterating it and getting better um, and improving it for your actual use case. Do you plan on doing tutorial videos on other programming languages after you're done with C++? If so, what would be the next one? So professionally, I really just use C++ and C Sharp. Most of all, I really, really like C Sharp. I still think C++ is probably my favorite programming language, but C Sharp is definitely a very close second. I'm not sure if I would ever do C Sharp tutorials. Um, maybe in the future, I'm thinking like for the game engine series, there may be situations in which I decide to write some tools for that uh, in C Sharp. So that like potentially I might want to use C Sharp for that and maybe I'll end up doing a few C Sharp. I'm not sure. To be honest, I'm not sure what's gonna happen with that. But when the game engine series, speaking of the game engine series, by the way, just so you guys know, the exact uh, airing of the first episode for that series is going to be on... Ah, uh, got you there. To be honest, I've, I've got no idea. It's gonna come when it, when it comes because I'm still planning it and working on it. But anyway, moving on. So, um, I'm currently at college studying computer science. What extracurricular activities, personal projects should I focus on to be more attractive to companies in the future? And that's a pretty good question. Really hard to answer. Uh, it really depends on the company that you're applying to. If you know that you're applying to a company that is like a AAA game studio that uses and their own engine that they've written in C++ and maybe, you know, mostly they use C++ for game programming and maybe like a bit of Lua for scripting or Python for scripting or C Sharp, whatever it is that they use, try and demonstrate that you're capable of using those technologies. That specific kind of development stack, right? So. 
show that you can make your own engine in C++ and you can make a game using C Sharp with that C++ engine or whatever. Have that on like GitHub or like, like as a portfolio, like on a website or something like that. Show that you can actually use the tools that they're using. That's gonna be by far the best thing that you can do. For example, I was really interested in game engines. I made my own game engines. When I applied for a job, they saw that and they hired me onto the game engine team because obviously I was really passionate about that and that's what I enjoy doing most. So definitely think about that. If you're applying for a team that uses Unity, then build a game in Unity. Maybe similar to the one that they're working on. Obviously, it'd probably be much smaller scale, but show that you can function like them and that you would fit well into their team. That's gonna be really important. Um, but obviously, like programming and all that kind of skill and ability isn't the only thing that matters when you're looking for a job at like a software company or at a game studio. You also have to be like a person that the team would enjoy having on their team. So definitely think about like how you re how you work in a team setting and bring up some nice examples that would make that team think that you would be a good fit for them. Because ultimately, like what I look for in a person is not someone who's really, really smart, but likes to work alone and isn't a team player. I'd much rather have someone who is just more passionate about doing what they're doing, doesn't mind being corrected, doesn't mind admitting that they're wrong in situations because we're all wrong. Like all the time it happens, we're human. I would much rather a person like that that was a little bit like not as smart or doesn't know as much as someone who is but is not a pleasure to work with. That's very, very important. Anyway, that's going to wrap up this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, you can hit the like button. Obviously, you can leave a comment with any other questions you might, you might have. I might get to that in a future video. Maybe I'll film some vlogs on the plane where I answer some questions or something like that. I've got a bunch of topics that I wanted to get through as well. I'll try my best to do them in the, maybe the coming weeks. Would be probably a good chance to just pull out the camera and do a bit of a vlog. But anyway, I will see you guys maybe in San Francisco. But otherwise, goodbye.